All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so my name is Ismail Tawul. I'll be presenting on my thesis entitled Estimating International Tourist Preference Relating to Ecotourism in a Wildlife Sanctuary. Um, is it? Okay. Just a general overview of what I'm doing. I'll present over my literature review, research methodologies, uh, results, conclusions, uh, of course, interest studies. Ah, uh, you have to really press it. Okay, so. Um, when it comes to conservation science, one of the most important understandings of our time is that we realize that human and natural interactions are connected, right? Compared to the classic idea of where humans were the stewards of nature, but today we found that that's really not the case. So therefore, the aim of conservation science then is to identify management strategies that benefit both human and natural interactions. Now, of course, there's this argument that ecotourism is a great tool to do that. And there's, those are some reasons of why. But what I do want to focus on is on the third bullet. It offers a source for financing for conservationists. All right? And when, we, when I look at the literature about willingness to pay, especially for protected areas, what I find that is, on average, protected area visitors have high willingness to pay for conservation. These are but a few citations, but there's many more. Um, what we have to realize though, that there are obviously some people who do not prefer paying to access protected areas, right? Those are some literatures that kind of supports that idea. So this brings us to the idea then of what um, Perkins and Grace are talking about, that there seems to be a segment within the tourism area. So there seems to be the traditional tourists and now the eco-tourists. So when contextualizing this idea to Belize, we find that um, Lindbergh, so he did this study back in 1994, he found that tourism was not contributing towards um, conservation here in the country. So he was the first to ask that question of whether or not tourism was in fact um, contributing finances towards our conservation efforts. Um, now coming into modern times or our time, in, um, what we have there is the financial report for Coxcomb Base and of course that's just a summary. And as we can see, in, from 2013 to 2016, these guys, their expenditures are larger than their revenues. So that, that's giving us an indication then that tourism is not actually financing our uh, local protected areas, right? And as we know, the Coxcomb Basin uses um, ecotourism to help finance its operation. So, what are my research questions? Well, my guided question, or the big question that I'm looking at is, is there low support among international tourists for conservation efforts? Or is the tourist support for conservation effort undervalued by protected area managers? Right, so that's the kind of the big question that I'm looking at. Of course, my specific questions are, um, what are the, or what are visitors or international visitors' willingness to pay for the current scenario at Cox School? And then, what are the preference for a higher willingness to pay? All right, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. Now, those are my objectives. Um, the methodology I plan to use is something called the choice experiment methodology. So. Um, this is a method based on consumer demand theory. Now, I know I'm going into a bit of economics here, but what this idea states is that individuals derive utility from characteristics of a product. So, for example, think about us buying a phone, for example. We don't just look at the phone itself, we look at attributes or characteristics of the phone. 
So the color, the lens, the screen size, all of that affects our decision. So choice experiment then gives us a way of calculating your preference. Now there are several ways of doing this. Um, the ones that I chose were the conditional logic model. What this does is just simply tell me the average preference within a population. The random parameter logic model tells me individual preference, all right? So we could calculate willingness to pay for every individual. The latent class model gives characteristics, right? So if there are different groups of people within here, using the latent class model, I could figure out who those groups are and what their preferences are, right? Um, so the attributes that I decided to consider for this study is the self-guided tour booklet. Now, this is just a booklet that offers information about the sign. Um, while I was there doing some personal observations, people were longing for something substantial, something to give them reference, some sort of information. For them, it's just like landing at Coxcomb and oh, what? Um, I'm just looking around. But these guys say they want more. All right, so to solve that problem, I said, all right, well, what, how would you feel if we gave you a booklet? So that's one, crowding. Um, um, the Belize Ottawa Society was particularly interested in crowding, mostly because of the cruise ship port nearby. So how would large crowd affect the current um, visitors to Coxcomb? Um, biodiversity conservation, I'll explain that a bit more later. And of course, entrance fee. How much are you willing to pay if you've had your preferences? All right, so that's what I'm looking at. Now, these are just a breakdown of my attributes. So for example, crowding, I divided into three categories, low, medium, and high. And of course, that is my definition of what I mean by high or low crowding, all right? Um, entrance fee, you will see that I go as high as $25, with the current entrance fee being $10 for international visitors. So my field work, my field work actually happened from January to March in 2017. Um, my calculated sample size was 262 surveys, but what I actually collected was 280 surveys. Um, of course, I interviewed these um, participants after their visit to the site, all right? Now, here's the results. Um, this is actually a fairly basic chart. The way we interpret it is that if it's on the positive side, higher preference. On the negative side, lower preference, all right? Now, what we see here is that the average preference is to have a self-guided tour booklet and increase the endangered species population. However, there is a low willingness to pay, on average, right? But um, remember, this is average. So I decided to separate the group. What, what do I see when I separate the group? What I see is that the visitors with high income were the ones who actually had a high willingness to pay. Now, by high income, I mean any individual who makes more than 3,000 US dollars per month, all right? So that's what I mean by that. Um, visitors with high education, and by high education, I simply mean a master's and above, and who intended to revisit had a low willingness to pay. Right? So these are attributes that are variables that we need to consider. But the most interesting thing about this table, though, is this. We find that large crowds actually bring down satisfaction. Right? So it seems that the crowding is what really affects a tourist satisfaction to a site. Um, now turning these data into dollar values. What are the dollar values out there? Well, we could see that for, so tour one, if you remember from my attribute table, is having a tour guided booklet, um, a self-guided tour booklet. And um, visitors are actually willing to pay $4.51 more to access that booklet. Um, when we look at crowding, right? 
we find that we start to lose money if the crowd goes too big. So at this level, I set it at 20. If you encounter 20 groups of people while hiking, um, we start losing money. Right? Um, bio. So this is an increase in biodiversity conservation. And we found that tourists actually preferred it. However, they're willing to pay $2.21 for that. Now, my latent class model. Who are, the, who are these people? Right? Um, they can be categorized in general. Now, my category comes from my category. Sorry, comes from this guy Cole Hart at Al 2017. He did a similar study up in Canada, and he did the latent class model in order to figure out the different types of tourists that goes there. Now, here in Coxcomb, what I found was the outdoor tourists and the casual recreationalists. Now, what is the difference between these two? Well, we find that in class one, the outdoor tourists actually have high willingness to pay. While those who fall under the casual recreationists have a low willingness to pay. All right? So these are variables that are um, important to consider whenever we do valuation studies, because not everybody prefers the same thing. Um, now, going into our hypothetical scenarios, what I did was that I kind of played around with the data a little bit. What, what do I find? I find that right now, business as usual, people are willing to pay $14.12 just to access Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary. Compare that to the $5 that is the current entrance price. Right? So that's telling us something. Right? Now, but let's look at the general tourist development. Um, the goal of Coxcomb, I'm um, sorry, Audubon, is to attract more visitors to Coxcomb. But all I did was increase my stuff to medium crowd density and look at how much the price dropped. $3.11. So the crowd seems to be the most important variable here. Let's move on to scenario three where I increased everything, right? I, you have a tour-guided booklet, you have um, biodiversity conservation increase, but you have a loud crowd density. Once we have a loud crowd density, we find that the value tourists are willing to pay actually goes up to almost $20. Um, so I think that's something interesting. So conclusions and suggestions. Well, this is just a restatement of my presentation. We find that visitors are sensitive to crowding. Now, um, Audubon needs to worry about this because between 2011 and 2015, there was actually a 31% increase in visitations, all right? And if this trend continues, obviously the um, visitation continues and that affects their visitors' preference. Um, the model shows, or LCA model shows, that there are heterogeneous preferences, right? So meaning that not everybody prefers the same thing. So that is something to consider whenever we try to put prices on a product, all right? So we need to kind of offer different packages whenever we sell our products. Um, now the best scenario, actually, is the wildlife tourism scenario. We can see that people are willing to pay very high to spot animals, right? Now the literature is filled with ways of how to increase um, wildlife sightings, and these are just but some um, examples of how to do that, all right? Um, there is, of course, a high mean willingness to pay. So this is the average willingness to pay. And we find that, well, I suggest then that the entrance fee at Coxcomb can be increased. But we do have to consider the heterogeneous preference, all right? So um, this is up to Audubon of how much they want to increase, but taking that people prefer different products or experiences. And to answer my big question, well, my conclusion is that international visitors to Belize do have a high support for conservation efforts. However, um, this support is undervalued by protected area managers. All right? 
So that's the end of my presentation. Oh, sorry. Uh, future studies. Well, especially for the students here who have to do a thesis for their bachelor's program, especially for the NRM program, um, these are some things you guys could consider. For example, attributes I never considered things like trail development, infrastructure, um, tour guides, using local tour guides as the sale of local food. All right? Do tourists prefer this? And if they do, how much are they willing to pay for these services? All right? I never considered those attributes. Uh, the main reason why is because when you consider too many attributes, your calculation starts to get clumsy. All right? It starts to be harder to deal with. So I just prefer keeping it simple. Um, higher bids are needed. For example, my $25 was not high enough. People were willing to pay even higher than the $25 I set. So whenever we're doing these theoretical um, frameworks or approaches, we need higher um, dollar values. So what content do, prefer, do, I'm sorry, do people prefer in a self-guided tour booklet? And the reason I put that up there is because when you speak to these tourists, they want all sorts of things in that booklet. Right? to the point that I don't really know what to put. So I think that would be a great study for someone else to follow up on. Now, that is the end of my presentation. That is my references. Thank you very much for listening.